Uh, this is a video on the ancestral tree of Isaiah 11 regarding Moshe, the anointed one, and its connection with Isaiah 53. This is Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. But a shoot shall grow out of the stump of Jesse. A twig shall sprout from his stock. The spirit of the Lord shall alight upon him. A spirit of wisdom and insight. A spirit of counsel and valor. A spirit of devotion and reverence for the Lord. The Hebrew word ha means the, and Moshiach means anointed one. So he's often referred to as Hamoshiach. And in Isaiah 11, the anointed one is from the line of David through King Solomon by covenants and from the reference to the stump of Jesse who was the father of King David. Isaiah 61, 1, with the descendant of King David as the speaker, says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. The Spirit of God alighting upon you and entering you, as he did with Ezekiel, it's made more clear in Ezekiel, that's the anointment. Instead of drops of oil on your head to be a king, that's the anointment to be anointed by God. His spirit alights, enters you, and God is in his spirit. I have many uh, uploads on that already. Okay, and the Spirit of the Lord God is also the angel of his presence, as you can find in Isaiah 63. He's an angel, but his body is not human form with wings. His body is literally the Spirit of God. So he's the Holy Spirit, and he is a person, and he's the angel of God's presence. Isaiah prophetically reverse, <coughs> refers to the stump of Jesse, father of King David, as an announcement, a prophecy, of the ending of the line of the kings of Judah, whose last king, Jeconia, was banished. And the line terminated from ever ruling over Judah again. And this followed with the defeat by Babylon and deportation of Judah. The line of the kings of Judah is the ancestral tree of David forbidden to ever rule over Judah and Jerusalem. The tree felled, leaving only a stump. That's why there's a reference to the stump, because of the line that got banished. It is the line of heirs in the first chapter of the book of Matthew of the Holy Bible, the line of Jesus Christ. God did not banish this line of Jesse of the kings of Judah until long after the death of Isaiah. God knew in Isaiah's time that the line of the kings of Judah would be taken into exile and his temple destroyed that he would end that line, leaving just a stump of Jesse for his anointed one to be raised from. Jesus could not fulfill the book of Isaiah chapter 11 because he wasn't from the stump. He's from the felled tree. Yeah, the line of Jesus is from the felled ancestral tree of Jesse, a tree cut down. The twig, that's the anointed one, sprouts from the shoot, that's the descendant, that's a shoot that, that, that uh, comes up in the stump. And the reference to the twig, it's not a branch, it's a twig because the anointed one does not come until the day of the Lord, which is this day. 
Jeremiah 31 tells you all about that. And I've got many uh, videos on it. It's a new ancestral tree. Now, going to Isaiah 53, 2. For he has grown by his favor, like a tree crown, like a tree trunk out of arid ground. As it turns out, the arid ground is Gentile lands because God comes from Adam, Gentile lands. Sometimes a direct reference to Christianity. So there's using the ancestral tree metaphors again. And this continues the symbolism of an ancestral tree. The, ground, <clears throat> the man grows by the favor of God like a tree crown. And that's a dominant tree crown, reaches all <clears throat> over all other plants in the forest, including the crowns of other trees. From a sinful man, this is talking about the man of Isaiah 53, whose life has been full of pain, suffering, <clears throat> and sorrows, familiar with disease. Another reason it can't be Jesus, Isaiah 53. We know he can't be Isaiah 11. He doesn't come from the stump. And now we know he can't be the man of Isaiah 53 because he's familiar with disease and God crushes him with disease. And he's afflicted by God, which can very well be disfigurement at birth. David wouldn't have anything to do with anybody disfigured at birth. Why? Because it showed God's disfavor with them. And um, familiar with the disease that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, alights upon, and God's presence is in His Spirit. They're like two different clouds. He, he, here's God's presence. It's His mind made up of elements that's not spirit. And then you got this angel whose body is spirit. They're like two clouds and they just float together, and they just fit just fine. God is still one. He created the angel. But, but their presence is angel of his presence, and whose body is God's spirit, the spirit of the Holy God, the Holy Spirit. So when the spirit alights upon the anointed one, God is in him. And that's how you arrive at uh, the man Jacob wrestled with. He's not an angel. He's just a man in divine beings. Who are the divine beings? The angel of God's presence and God. The man's still a man and that's what Jacob said. I have wrestled with a man in divine beings. He didn't say I've wrestled with an angel. <clears throat> so the spirit of light's upon him and he grows to the crown of God's righteous servant who is also uh, God's servant David, that's what he calls the man of Isaiah 11, Elijah and the prophet like Moses. They were all three righteous. They were all three servants of God. And we, so we have the righteous servant of Isaiah 53, but we have three others. But we only have one description. He's all four of them. There are other verses of Isaiah 11 that connect the anointed one to the man described in Isaiah 53. This is from Isaiah 11, verse 10. The stock of Jesse that has remained standing shall become a standard to peoples. Nations shall seek his counsel, and his abode shall be honored. This is from 53, verse 8. By oppressive judgment he was taken away. Who could describe his abode? For he was cut off from the land of the living, cut off from society. Same thing happened to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, go to your house and you do not go back out amongst the people. And I put the cords of my power on you to make sure you don't. Take him from society. Because he doesn't die, he's given long life. This is from 53. Assuredly, I will give him the many as his portion. He shall receive the multitude as his spoil. So the abode of the righteous servant is humble when the Lord cuts him off from society. No more going to work. No more earning money. 
just straight into God's fire of refinement until he's ready. Just him, God, and the angel of his presence. So the abode of the righteous servant is humble when the Lord cuts him off from the world of material things and society in Isaiah 53 8. And in the end, after he grows to the tree crown, the abode of the servant is one to be honored in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10. From a poor man to a rich man, with the many as his portion and the multitude as his spoil, and an abode to be honored. The anointed one is described in the 12 verses of Isaiah 53. And if you ever look at the commentary of Jews for Judaism or Toby a singer, if you look how they try to fit the Jewish people in there as one man, you'll just be amazed at how ridiculous it is and absolute absurdity. And I've got plenty of writings on that. Anyway, so, chapter 11, Anointed One, described in Isaiah 53. Thank you for listening.